Hello guys, I hope you can hear me. Let's begin the session. So guys, uh, in the last session, we have covered uh, linear regression using scikit-learn. And today we will talk about linear regression using sage micro algorithm that is linear learner. Right? Today we will discuss how to implement linear regression using linear learner sage micro algorithm. Right? But uh, before that, uh, uh, first I want to give you a little uh, uh we can say uh, i want to just give you a, a short uh, uh, recap about linear regression right and then after i'll tell you what is linear learner algorithm okay so for that i'm going to share my whiteboard screen okay so let me give you a short intro about linear regression okay so in last class we have seen uh in the case of linear regression we need to build a linear relationship between input variables and output variable, right? In the case of linear regression, and if we talk about uh, simple linear regression, basically uh, we can categorize this linear regression into two parts. Simple linear regression, in which we have one feature and one target variable, and another we have multiple linear regression multiple linear regression in which we have more than one input variable and one target variable so the main idea behind using linear regression is to build a linear relationship between input variables and our target variable so in the case of simple linear regression we will have one input variable and one target variable and in the case of multiple linear regression we will have more than one input variable and one target variable right okay suppose we have some data about uh suppose we have some data about uh company sales right so we have a, a feature x right uh like a, a advertisement and we have target column let's say that is sales so if you want to predict uh sales of a company on the basis of its advertisement so we can use here linear regression but here we have only one feature advertisement right so here we can use simple linear regression so we will have some input data we will have some input data and also corresponding some output values so on the x-axis let's say we have a column advertisement and uh, here we have our target column sales Right? So here we have to find a linear relationship. Right? We have to find the linear relationship. So here we can use equation y equal to mx plus c. So this equation we can use. Right? This equation we can use where m is the slope or coefficient. M is the slope or coefficient. X is the feature. Right? X is a feature. So uh, in that case, the feature is advertisement and uh, C is the constant value. And here Y is the target variable. Right? So whatever X and Y values we have, first we have to compute the value of M and the value of C. Right? Whatever X value and Y value we have, we have to compute M and C. Right? or sometime we can also call this c as a b so m and b both are the parameters both are the parameters and in the case of multiple linear regression we will have more than one feature right so the equation will be like uh, y equal to uh, m1 x1 plus m2 x2 and let's say we have if we have n features so at the end we will have m n into x n plus constant term c right constant value so this will be the equation if we have n feature right okay so let's uh, see how we can implement linear learner which is a sage maker algorithm so i'm going to share my screen stop sharing okay so linear learner is a supervised learning algorithm that is used to fit align to the training data it could be used for both classification and regression tasks as follows 
it means uh, using linear learner uh, we can solve regression problem as well as classification problem the difference between regression and classification is that in the case of regression we predict the continuous value as the output but in the case of classification we predict the predefined label or class in the output right in the case of classification we have to uh, classify the input data into predefined classes means uh, yes or no right zero one or two true and false so in the case of classification we will have predefined classes right and in the case of regression we have to predict a continuous value so classification we will discuss in more detail in the further classes right so in today's session we will talk about how to implement linear regression using linear learner algorithm so we can so uh, we can do a regression we can do binary classification or multi class classification right so in the case of regression the output contains numeric continuous numeric values for example if we want to predict the sales of a company Right. So in that case, in the output, we will have continuous values. Binary classification and multi-class classification, both are the part of classification that we'll discuss in further classes. So the algorithm that we can use here for binary classification, we can use logistic regression, right? Where we will discuss about a sigmoid function. And in the case of multi-class classification, we can use multinomial logistic re regression, right? That use softmax function. So uh, these two algorithms we will discuss in the further classes in the uh, right, in the case of classification. So let's talk about linear regression. So the example you can see here, what will be the temperature be in uh, in the Atlanta tomorrow? So here uh, the value of temperature will be a continuous value. The next example we have how many units of this product will say, right? So again in the output we will have continuous value. The next sample is what will this house sell value? So if you want to predict the price of a house, right, we can use here again regression. There are some important hyperparameters for this algorithm like predictor time. So if we are doing a regression problem, we have to pass a predictor time equal to regressor. You can see here, we have three options here, binary classifier, multi-class classifier, and regressor. So uh, if you are going to deal with regression problem, we have to pass predictor type equal to regressor. Then number of epochs means the number of passes over the data, or we can say training data. Feature dimension means number of features that we have in our input data. L1, this is basically a L1 regularization value, right? And regularization we use to reduce the overfitting problem. Then we have uh, WD, which is a L2 regulation va value, which is also a technique to reduce overfitting problem. Optimizer means optimization algorithm. Right? So optimization algorithm we use to find the best value of the parameters. Parameters means M and B, coefficient and constant value. So these are the optimization algorithms. SGD, ADAM, RMS prop, and also we have some other optimizers. But the ADAM is most widely used optimization algorithm. So the main purpose is uh, we have to minimize the loss by finding the best value of the parameters. We also have some other hyperparameters like learning rate, uh, which is the step size for the optimizer, or we can say how quickly we want to reach toward the minimum point of a loss function. So here uh, uh, we will also use a loss function. So in the case of regression, uh, we can use mean squared error as a loss function. And then we have a uh, mini batch size. Here we have to pass the number of samples that we will pass in the each batch. Number of models. So they are okay. But if we talk about some important hyperparameters, so uh, data loss function, learning rate, optimizer number of epochs right predictor type so these are the important hyperparameters okay now let's do some practical so here uh, on aws cloud we can start a notebook here notebook instance okay here you can see uh, 
this is option here create notebook instance right and this will be very similar to the jupyter notebook so first we have to create first we have to create a notebook instance here so here we have to pass a, a unique name right okay and rest of the value we can use as a default here okay, and here we have notebook instance type that is ml t3 medium right and that instance come under a free tier option right another free tier option we get this uh, uh, we get this instance type and here you can also search what are the options or the instance type that we can use under the free tier uh, so aws free tier okay so here you can see for machine learning in the free trial we can use amazon sage maker right for only two months and uh, here you can see the instance type where we can use okay so 250 hours per month ml t3 medium on the studio notebook right and 250 hours per month of the ml t2 medium or ml t3 medium on on demand notebook instance Right. So uh, either we can use T2 medium or T3 medium. So here we are using, you can see here we are using T3 medium. Okay, and rest of the value. Okay. Uh, one more thing here, uh, we have to also specify the IM role. So here we can create a new role. Okay. So, so here uh, basically uh, we want to provide uh, S3 bucket access right to this notebook instance that uh, here we are going to create so here we can choose this option any s3 bucket so what is s3 here okay uh, let me explain you in short what is s3 so s3 is a aws service simple storage service that we can use to store the data it allows people to store objects as files in buckets as directories right we can store data in the form of object into the bucket and the buckets basically are directories here okay i'll show you uh, the service so s3 is most widely used aws service you can search here s3 you can see a scale uh, scalable storage in the cloud so uh, for mm -hmm. for machine learning purpose if you want to store our data into this uh, s3 First, we have to create a bucket, right? And uh, and the buckets are simply directories or folders. So for you here, you can see Amazon S3 is an object storage service. So in a while, we will see how to create a bucket, right? And how to store a file into this bucket, right? And how to access that file while training a model. Okay. And then after we can just click on this button, click Node Instance, and we will get the instance. So here I have already created a notebook instance. So I'm not going to create a, another one. My demo code. And then after you can just click on this open Jupyter. And you will get something like this one. You will get something like this one. Right. And here uh, I have uploaded my Jupyter notebook file. Right. Otherwise, you can also create your own Jupyter notebook file here on this Jupyter notebook. You can see here you have this option. Right. So here you can take this conda python 3 right and uh, with the help of this uh, you can create a new notebook so uh, uh, here you can create a new jupyter notebook file okay let me open this one so here first we have to set the kernel so kernel we want to choose a conda python 3 set kernel okay and i will restart and clear output okay so first we have to import some necessary libraries here pandas Pandas basically we use for data analysis. So first, if you want to read the data from a CSV file, right, and then if you want to do some data analysis, you can use a pandas. Then if you want to use a numpy, so numpy basically we use for working with n dimension arrays. So if you want to work with n dimension arrays, you can use numpy. Seaborn is basically a data visualization library. Matplotlib is also our data visualization library but the difference is that seaborn we mostly use for statical information means if we want to visualize statical information right, then we can use seaborn right. in the seaborn we have some uh, advanced plotting function as compared to matplotlib then we have this library boto3 
So Boto3 is basically a Python library that we can use to access the AWS services. Right? So if you want to access the AWS service using programming language like Python, you can use this library Boto3. CHMaker library we have here, right? To access the CHMaker algorithms. So here we have a file, Fuel Economy, right? First, we want to read the data from this file. And we want to see number of columns, number of rows in this data. So df.head. So head is a method of class data frame. So if you want to display by default first five record, you can use this method head. Okay. So here you can see we have, uh, this is a data frame, right? Data frame is a data structure of pandas. Or in simple words, you can say uh, data frame is a two dimension data structure. Right, in which we can store our data in the form of rows and columns. So here we have first column horsepower and the second column is fuel economy. So here horsepower is the input variable or we can say feature and the fuel economy is the target column here. So on the basis of horsepower of a vehicle, we have to predict its uh, fuel economy. So if we have horsepower 118 and then the fuel economy is 29.34 or something. If we have horsepower, this one, this is the corresponding output value. So here, or you can see this is the input column, and here this is the target column. And we have input values and their corresponding output values. So here we want to build a model that can predict the fuel economy on the basis of given horsepower. So we have two columns here: horsepower and fuel economy. This is how you can access the columns. So in the case of uh, machine learning using SageMaker, if we have data into a CSC file, so we have to set the first column as the target column, right? We have to set the first column as the target column, right? And our target column is fuel economy. So this column we can set as the first column here. So we want to create our data frame in which the first column will be a fuel economy, right? Okay, and rest of the columns will be our features. So fuel economy, so this is our input column. Sorry, uh, this is our target column, right? And uh, okay. And then after the rest of the columns, we will have as the features. So pd.concrete we can use for concrete initial. Now you can see uh, we have this data frame where the first column is the target column. And this is the feature. Now on the shape, if you want to check the shape, so we have 100 rows and two columns. Next, we want to split the data into train and test. So in scikit-learn, we have a function and will function it train test split. So sklearn or scikit-learn is a machine learning library in Python. So here we are here uh, we are using this train test split function. We can pass our final data, test size we can mention here. So test size is 30% means 30% samples we want to use for testing. That's 70% samples we want to use for training. So here we will get training data and here we will get validation data or testing data. So the training data we want to store into a CSV file that is train data or CSV, right? And we don't want to save the indexing, right? And, and the header also. Similarly, we can store our validation data into a CSV file, right? And also we want to, uh, okay. and also uh, we don't want to save the indexing and the header. Right, so that's why here we have pass index equal to false, header equal to false. Now here you can see here, here we have got two files, train data.csv and valid data.csv. Next, we will upload these two CSV file, these two CSV file into the S3 bucket. Okay, so first we have to create a bucket. Let's create a bucket here. So bucket name, okay, uh, must have a global unique name, right? Buckets must have a global unique name and uh, buckets are defined at the region level so here you can see uh, okay uh, i'll show you better that so here uh, we are going to create a bucket so let's take a bucket name uh, my reg demo and one more thing that uh, must start with lowercase letter or number right and there will be no uppercase and no underscore. So this is the bucket name and that must be a unique. 
okay and here you can see this region it means uh, this bucket will be created into this region right north virginia and uh, rest of the thing we will use as default okay and uh, now we can just click on create bucket you can see this my rg demo this bucket has created and now inside this bucket we will create a folder we will create a folder uh, my data so in this folder we will store our training data and test data or validation data we will create here uh, another subfolder in which we will store our trained model so the folder name is let's take shared hyphen model and now let's go back to the jupyter notebook file okay so next we will start our sagemaker session the sagemaker dot session right and then after here uh this is the method upload underscore data so this is the csv file that we want to upload into this bucket right and this is the key prefix key prefix means subfolder right so you know inside this bucket we want to store our data into this folder so we have bucket name we have taken my reg demo my reg demo so this is the bucket name and this is the subfolder name so this csv file will be stored into this folder my data right and this subfolder will be uh we have just created inside this bucket we are getting some error so let's see what error we are getting here and let me check the my reg demo okay when calling the put uh okay access denied here we are getting this error access tonight okay uh okay uh we can do one thing let me uh shut down this file this should be book file okay and uh let me open this sage maker again okay and Mm, this is the notebook instance let's create again a notebook instance okay let me stop this one stop so this is how we can stop our notebook instance and let me create another one so my demo ml my demo ml and this is the instance type okay and uh, yes here i am role let's create a new role here and any s3 bucket okay next uh, click on this create notebook instance okay and this notebook uh, this notebook instance we can just delete so after stopping we can just delete this one now it will take some time and you can uh, refresh it okay so now this one so this notebook instance has stopped and we want to just delete it this is how you can delete this notebook instance okay meanwhile you can see uh the instance type okay uh 25 hours per month here we will get for data wrangler means for data processing using ch maker and uh okay and uh, turn, okay and 50 hours per month of m4.x large or m5.x large for training so while training a model either we can choose this one m4.x large or we can choose this one m5.x large and for the inference means for making prediction uh, either we can use the m4.x large or m5.x large this is basically a management console right and here uh, if you want to access the sage maker you can just here type sage and here uh, okay and here you are getting this option sage maker and then after you can look at this notebook and just click on this notebook instances and here you have this option create notebook instance s3 which is a AWS service to store the data in the cloud so here we have created this bucket my rdg demo and here you can see these two subfolders my data and shape model here you can see this notebook instance service has started just click on this open jupyter and we can upload and here we are uh, here uh i want to upload my existing jupyter notebook file click on this upload and also i want to upload this csv file field economy and then open this jupyter notebook file here 
and set the kernel kernel path three. Okay, now let's uh, restart and kill output. So the bucket we have created ML RG demo. So instead of this, you can you you can write uh, my REG demo, and you can see the bucket name is yes my REG demo. Okay, next uh, we can set the target to the first column uh, split the data you can see so this file train data csv now we have just stored into this bucket right my rg demo okay i'll show you that uh, if i click on this my rg demo and here this my type my data you can see this file right train train data csv similarly we can store our validation data so we can use here the bucket name is my reg demo right so both train and validation data stored on our s3 bucket right which is my reg demo next uh, we will just uh, retry our linear learner algorithm that we want to use so here we can import this image uh, uris and then here uh, we will just store the reason so here you can see the reason is uh if we okay i'll show if we go at search maker s3 is a global service means uh, we don't need to mention any reason but here if we talk about the search maker so here we will find the reason that uh, we are working on that is north virginia okay and uh, with the help of both the three libraries this is how we can access the reason name and then we will retry the algorithm that is linear learner next uh, the bucket name is my my reg demo and uh, again the prefix or the subfolder we have created saved model you can see if we go at s3 inside this bucket you can see saved hyphen model same folder the same uh, subfolder we can use here so this subfolder uh, we want to use to save our trained model now here sagemaker.estimator.estimator right so here we will just create an instance of this algorithm and here also we'll pass the hyperparameter so role equal to sagemaker.get execution role so this role uh, we pass basically uh, to access the s3 bucket right to access the s3 bucket and instance count one instance type is ml dot m4 dot x large output path is output location where we want to save our train model and the stage maker session object and then here we will uh, use the method training input right here we'll pass our file name so we have this bucket uh, so here we have a uh, path at this location training input path that you can see here uh, what is training input path this one so we have our file in the s3 and this bucket and this is the subfolder and this is the file name same for the train data right so sagemaker.training input and uh, this is the parameter on this method so here we have to pass the path of the csv file same for the validation data next here we will set some other highway parameters like a predictor type regressor because this is a regression problem best size is 20 epochs uh, so the number of passes over the training data is 5 number of models that you want to use parallelly for the modeling you know, that is 10 here and the loss function here we want to use absolute loss function and then we can call fit method in the fit method we can pass over train data and validation data so what is uh, this absolute loss function okay i'll show you uh, first i'll show you the mean squared error mean squared error and you can see this formula one by n n is the number of samples summation i equal to one till n yi is the actual output of the ith sample and y head right y head i means predicted output of the ith sample and we can take the difference then we can take square so this is the problem mean squared error right and this is also a loss function in the case of regression 
but here uh, but here we are using absolute loss function means uh, instead of a square here we will have term absolute so that we can get a positive value so mean square absolute error you can see we have same formula so instead of square now we have absolute here right so the actual output of the eighth sample minus predicted output of the eighth sample so number of models means uh, number of models to train in parallel if you not set the number of parallel models to train will be decided by the algorithm itself one model will be trained according to the given training you can see here preparing for the instances preparing the instances for the training downloading input data so what is key so key is the full path right in the case of s3 key is the full path means uh, we have to mention the s3 then bucket name then subfolder name then object name means file name and the maximum object size is 5 tv right the maximum file size that we can store into a s3 bucket that is 5 tv after this here uh, we can create an endpoint uh, so endpoint uh, we create to deploy our model so that we can make inferences on the new data or on the test data so import date time and uh, first here we want to set a name for the endpoint right so date equal to date time dot date time dot now right and this is the endpoint name right linear rg model plus current date or we can say today date and uh, this is how we can create a model endpoint so linear dot deploy initial instance count means uh, number of uh, number of instances one and the instance type we want to use and the instance type is ml.m4.x large and the endpoint name this is the endpoint name okay here you can see the training second uh, 137 and the billing second is also 137 okay and this is the endpoint name linear rg model and then date and then we want to deploy our model okay now it will take some time so meanwhile we can we can understand what is mean squared error so mean squared error you can see uh, is a evaluation technique right for the regression model so if you want to judge the uh, performance of a regression model we uh, we can use this mean squared error or we can also use a mean absolute error so there are some ways uh, to check the performance of a trained model on the given data points so if you want to check the performance of a regression model either we can use a mean squared error or we can mean a mean absolute error right and the most widely used technique is r squared we can also use here r square so on the basis of r square value we can also judge the performance of our regression model after that uh, okay if you want to access this model for your uh, uh, for your http api right you can use endpoint you can use model endpoint uh, here you will find model endpoint in the training so endpoint will be stored here you can see so with the help of this endpoint we can make prediction with the help of a http api okay. now suppose uh, you have created a http api for your uh, machine learning application right and you want to access this model okay. so with the help of endpoint you can uh, you can make uh, prediction right with the help of this model but uh, here uh, we don't want to pay any any other extra charge right so once we are done right uh, we will delete this endpoint right we will delete this endpoint otherwise we have to pay some extra charge so once we are done uh, we will delete this endpoint right and this is the command here linear regression dot delete model or delete endpoint or we can also delete uh, here from this interface let's say select this one and take action here uh, we will get the 
here we will get this option delete then after uh, we will use a csv serializer and json deserializer okay. and we will set the uh, serializer of our train model equal to csv underscore serializer right and the dc okay and the d serializer we will set as the json deserializer it means in the output we will get the predictions in the form of json right or in the form of dictionary then after we can take any random data and we can make prediction on that data next we will set the serializer and deserializer for our trained model next uh, validation data dot drop so here we want to drop our target column so now we have one column that is our input column and we want to make prediction on this input column so you can see here the output we are getting in the form dictionary okay why we are getting output in the form of dictionary because we have set the deserializer equal to json deserializer right that's why here we are getting the output in the form of dictionary next uh, we want to store our output in the form of numpy instead of this dictionary right we want to store our data in the form of numpy array so we can use here np.array now we have output here in the form of numpy array next here we have actual output right and these are the predicted values so next we want to get here r square so r square is a evaluation technique for the regression models most of the time we get the r square value between 0 and 1 so if we have r square value close to 1 or equal to 1 it means our model is performing well on the given data points and if we have r square value that is equal to 0 close to 0 it means we have a very worst model so this is how we can import r2 score right and uh, we can also get a mean squared error so here uh, these are the inbuilt functions basically in scikit-learn so r2 score and uh, then the bracket first argument we can pass actual output that we have in y test and the predicted output so we are getting 0.92 right and this value is close to one it means we have a small difference right it means we have a small gap small gap between actual output and the predicted output right or we can see our models performing well our models performing well on the test data and if you want to see the mean squared error so we can call this function we can pass our actual output and predicted output right and this is the mean squared error but we mostly use r2 score okay because uh, with the help of r2 score uh, we can easily decide uh, whether our model is performing well or not because most of the time we get this value between 0 and 1 we can also get a negative value if we have negative value it means we have a very worst model it means uh, we have to use some uh, some other model for this data okay after this uh, now we can delete our endpoint here you can see we are getting this option in service so we can select this one and instead of this okay let me check any other option to delete this endpoint okay here you can see this option delete right so either you can uh, delete this endpoint on this button delete or you can just run this line leave linear regressor dot delete model or delete endpoint okay if we refresh this page okay uh, let's go back here you can see there are currently no resources right so we have just deleted our endpoint so this is how we can implement linear learner algorithm so we have just implement uh, we have just implemented simple linear regression using linear learner sage maker algorithm in the next session we will discuss how to implement multiple linear regression using the same algorithm linear learner okay so once we are done uh, also we have to stop this notebook instance right also we have to okay and uh, also we have to delete this buckets so we can just go rg demo and select this one select these two and delete 
because here uh, we don't want to pay any extra charge right so it would be good to delete all the resources we have created so we have created uh, the subfolders we have created bucket here uh, this will, uh, all, we will also delete this one just copy this my rich demo list it here and delete this bucket now you can see there is no bucket so this is the dashboard and you can see there is no bucket and next we will delete our notebook instance so let's uh, first uh, let me close this one and let me shut down this and select all these and delete close this one and uh, where is okay friends yes this one notebook instance right so now you can see the status in service but here we want to delete first we have to stop this service okay and then after you can just uh here you will get this option to delete this okay so this is how uh, we can implement linear regression simple linear regression using linear learning so guys this is enough for today's session right in the next session we will see how to implement multiple linear regression using same algorithm linear learner okay guys so let's find this session and let's meet in the next class thank you